Okay, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Skag Bones. I'm your host. If you remember last time on the show, uh, we did a tubeless setup. So the first episode of this this upgrade, like I said, was getting the new wheels in, new tires, and then of course I told you we're going to go to the the Ice Technology uh, rotors. They're only I think ten dollars more. So you're paying like thirty-five dollars versus twenty-five dollars for solid steel ones. So we're gonna put those on, uh, put the new cassette on the rear wheel, got the rear wheel first. It's been sitting the longest because that's the one we did first with the stance. So a couple things you're gonna need uh, with this. You are gonna need a normally an adjustable spanner. Okay, you are gonna need a, I have this Spin Doctor tool kit here uh, just because it's convenient. By the way, I'm gonna get rid of the sands stuff. We don't need those anymore. Uh, the front tire is still sitting out. It is still sitting there waiting to be flipped. Um, this guy had about five minutes per side, so uh, that that was pretty good. So five minutes per side with the sealant. <clears throat> and once we get everything on, uh, we'll put it back over there. Uh, so one of the things we're gonna need is we're gonna need our cassette tool and our chain whip now because this is a 11 speed drivetrain um, it uses a standard cassette tool it doesn't use a special SRAM one okay but we have to take it off the old one I don't have a secondary cassette uh, so we're gonna do that first we're gonna get the cassette on and then we're gonna put the disc brakes on because I want to get the cassette on that's the greasiest part uh, once we get that sucker on uh, then we can uh, then we can uh, take and put the brake, uh, uh, put the the disc rotors on. I want it, like I said, I don't like to have to touch these, so I normally get those on after. Okay. So, start off with we're gonna put our wheel back off to the side for now, and we're gonna take our old wheel. Like I said, not really an old wheel. Okay, uh, but like I said, I want to get this guy off here. So we're, you want to get your cassette tool like so, and I'm going to adjust the, the camera down just a little bit there um, so you guys can see. You're going to put the cassette tool in like so, and then you're like, well, why do we need a chain whip? So uh, actually, with this guy, we don't need an adjustable wrench. We have this tool in our Spin Doctor tool which is our eight millimeter <coughs> wrench. It has this little tool here that allows us to get in there. And since I gotta turn this way, as you see, that's freewheeling. So I have to hold this guy in place, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my chain whip on. I'm gonna put it on one of the upper cogs, or one of the bigger gears, so I can get it all the way around there. Sorry, wrong way. Get it on there like so. And I'm going to hold it in this direction like that. And we're going to take our chain tool like that and we're just going to push down, or sorry, our cassette tool like that, turn down, and we're going to spin that off. take off the, the locker like so okay now one other thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna grab ourselves a rag one thing I forgot to tell you guys is make sure you get a rag uh, that way you can clean everything off uh, you can use your chain lube and everything to clean everything as well Got our degreaser and our chain loop. And this already has some grease on it, so I'm not gonna take that off. I'm just gonna set that aside there, okay? And one at a time, I'm gonna pull these cogs off and I'm just gonna wipe them down. Uh, so I wanna get these wiped down real quick. 
I'm not going to show you the whole process of doing that because I've done a tutorial on how to maintain your drivetrain. So I'm going to put the technically put the video on pause for a second and once it's cleaned and taken off, we're going to remove this whole thing, set it off to the side, put it on the new bike. I'll show you the process of putting it back on the new bike, but I don't want to show you the process of cleaning it. That's kind of tedious. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back folks, and as you can see, got the chain, everything out on the deck here on the floor. Okay, so it's time to take our take our new new guy here. And it's real easy. You want to find your this small little notch here. That's your key. Okay. The keyway. You're going to take and you're going to put the small keyway so you're gonna put this big one on take one spacer sorry get this up for you guys so you like I said you find this there's a small keyway on here the small spindle piece piece and so you can see it better on one of these guys you have a small little cutout right in here and that's where you're gonna but you want a spacer in between each one Okay. Bam, like so. Make sure on the the gears, the writing is always on the outside. You always want to be able to read that writing. So they'll only fit on one way, but you don't want to try to shove them on a different way. You actually hurt the gears. They are keyed. Um, the more expensive cassettes will only will be a solid one piece. spacers you just you don't need them anymore you know the last three little pieces the last three chains chain rings they don't need spacers because they have their own little built-in spacer Then you're going to take your lock. Once those are on, you're going to take your lock ring, and I get it started. Uh, I already got grease on it. Did not wipe the grease off. Just get it started like so. Now, when you're tightening it, you do not no longer need your chain whip. Like I said, you can use a adjustable spanner. But we don't need to because we have this guy. And then you can torque it to the, the adjustments that it tells you to. Um, normally what I do is I take this bigger wrench. Give it one little pop like that and you should be good to go. So now, of course, we have our cassette on there. Man, nice and nice and loud. I love those, <laughs> the way those sounds. 
uh, DT Swiss are the same way. Okay, so we're going to go over the other side now. And we have our box. We want to take it out of the box. Nothing in the box itself. Everything is in here. Um, don't get rid of the hardware. Now, they got your information here. I don't need it. Just throw it that way. Yeah. Got your screws and bolts. We're going to take those out first. By the way, all the, your little screws are going to have some Loctite on them. You notice you got some little shims here. So these go like this, uh, one across each one like that. Okay, so the bolts they have already have the blue Loctite on. You don't want to scrub that off. You want to save that. Sorry guys, I am going to look at this because I've never used these before. Let's see if it tells me how to do those shims. Because they have these little shims on here. I don't know. Okay, it doesn't tell me what the shim is for. There's three of them. I know what the shims are for. Oh, actually, they're for the outside. Sorry. These are little washers. For the bolts, instead of having individual washers, they have two. Oh. Now, once again, we're going to have to bed these in. Okay. Take that off. You have this warning label, this little warning sticker. You can take that off at this time. Where you don't want to touch is where this stuff is going to be. Okay, so now It has rotation direction on here. So with this guy, you're not going to put it this way. You're going to put it on as such. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to aim the camera up just a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Because I'm going to have this thing on my lap. Okay, so these guys now, what you're doing you're going to put it says on there it's written top and you're just going to set them like so just like that these are little lock washers and it's brilliant that they did two per and Trying to see if these are torques. Yep, so these are all torques. We're going to start off by just, I'm going to kind of hand put them in there. Like so. I'm going to look at what torque size they are. So they're T20. So 
uh, this little bit here. T20. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, T20 is too small. Or T25. T25. That's perfect. So I'm not going to tighten these down yet. So some people are going to say you want to go cross star pattern. That is correct. I'm just getting them started so I don't lose the bolts. I don't lose these little these little washers. Because I don't wanna I don't wanna have to lose them on my floor. Carpeting makes it a little harder to find stuff. So get those started like so. Now some people ask, can I use a drill? If you have a torque setting on the drill uh, where it's got a clutch on it, you can use that. Problem is with those is sometimes that can be too much. Okay, so I use a good, this is an Allen set, the Silka, and it's got this adapter that goes on there and I can use these little torque bits and it's magnetic. Um, I'm also going to torque them with a torque wrench. So. I'm going to start by, actually, let's see here, we're going to pull out my little six newton meter giant one, we're going to use it instead, because it'll be a little easier. And the Silka. This is still a Silka bit. That's the nice thing about the Silka. These little bits. Um, it'll be a little bit easier with this T-handle driver. Now, I'm not going to get it completely tight yet. I'm going to get them all most of the way down. And then once I get them down, then I'll actually go cross pattern, tighten them, and torque them. And the, the thing is, you're, I know how far to go because, because of these washers. They have this little piece that sticks up on the washer. And I can see that portion of it. Then I go to the next one over, which is on the same washer that of the last one I did. Come over to this new one. Come back over to this guy. And once I do this one, I'm going to tighten that one sort of all the way. These are still a little loose. You can see there's a little bit of play there. Not a lot, but there is a little bit of play. The nice thing is I'll torque them with this 6 newton meter one. And it's going to be hard, you can't hear it, but the way they did these little lock washers, you can hear them tightening down. Kind of like a spring. And it's, you have this nice little, it's almost like a crunchy sound. <laughs> you don't want to panic. It's not a big deal. But you know you're tightening it down. And it's kind of a little bit of extra comfort to the, uh, to the Loctite. So, because the, the end of each one of these nuts have some little grooves in them. Okay. So now I'm going to torque six newton meters. Cross over to here and do six newton meters. Come back over to this one, six newton meters. Come over to this one, six newton meters. Six. 
Now you can probably do these up to about seven or eight newton meters, um, but that's good enough. Okay, so now we have our rotor, and as you can see, it's going to spin this way, and and it's going the direction it tells us to go. So that's our first wheel. Okay, now we're going to take our other wheel here, and we're going to take our this wheel, and we're going to put it back on the boxes. Okay. By the way, if you guys remember, the rear wheel had this little spacer on. We didn't need that because it's 11 speed. If we had a 12 speed uh, Eagle drivetrain or some very special adapted 12 speeds, um, you don't need this. This is for if you have a 10 speed. So because this is standard for an 11 speed, you don't need the spacer with the 11 speeds. If you got a 12 speed, you won't need the spacer as well. Um, most 12 speeds though are going to have that special XD cassette um, rear hub and that's what you normally use but with this one you don't or you can get the special uh, what is called the NX drivetrain that uses a standard 12 speed uh, on this this style hub so you don't need this this little guy but I will put it aside and save it for later so get our new rotor out of the box Put it out in my little tool bin here. Make sure you pull it out like this because, like I said, these are real susceptible to oils in your hands. And the last thing you want to do, if you get oil on it for some reason, take rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and wipe this off. If you get it on the actual brake pads themselves, you have to take some sandpaper to it and file it down a little bit or a very small file. You can get a very small grit file and use that to get any oil that may have gotten onto your brake rotors. Now some people are like, yeah, that takes down your brake pad, but it's either that or buy new brake pads. So typically that's why you want to be careful and you don't want to get anything on here because it'll cross contaminate over. Okay, but that's why we're just careful, aren't we? Once again, Get this on here. Rotation. Make sure we're going the right way. Sorry, folks. Always got to look at this because, yep, going the right way. You have the rotation on here, on the tire, and then you got the rotation here. Okay. Since we know we set the tire up properly, you know we got this one good. So like I said, once again, take your three lock washers or shims. Make sure it says top on the top. Or else it's so, so you have this little spring piece, and it won't lock properly. It, I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but if you look at these screws, they have this little notch in the bottom part of it. And that little lock washer is catching onto it and holding those screws in from rotating off. And the nice thing about it is, according to Shimano, you don't have to torque these as much. You don't have to have as much torque on them, so you're not going to break them. Uh, so, get them started. Like I said, you can use a drill if you have a clutch on it. I would set the clutch really low uh, so you're not over tightening it. Once you get them in all the way, then I would use a regular wrench or a torque wrench to actually tighten them down to finish it the rest of the way. I would not finish it with the drill, okay? Because you could do damage to the bolts mostly. They're probably going to strip them out if, if you're not careful. Uh, most of these bolts are going to be softer metals. 
uh, because we want them rust resistant or proof. So a lot of these are you get a lot of titanium bolts or uh, aluminum bolts or yeah they may be metal steel but they're a softer steel uh, just because they got to be of a different composition than the other materials because when you have aluminum in here which you have like with this um, if when you get weather uh, certain aluminum with aluminum is fine but when you have steel and aluminum uh, you get some corrosion can happen and you actually can corrode your aluminum so we think of aluminum as being corrosive resistant. We just think of stainless steel as being corrosive resistant, but it's, it's resistant, but it's not proof. So those are some things you just have to think about. So we're going to go down to right until we hear the little click, and then it's still going to be loose when you hear that little first click of the washer. I've never actually installed these Shimano ones before. I've never used the Ice Tech uh, technology rotors before, so this is going to be really nice. Um, from everything I've heard, that these dissipate heat extremely well. If you have the blades on them, on the more expensive ones, they really dissipate heat really well. If you get the Altegra, or not the Altegra, sorry, the XTR ones. Uh, but uh, those are considerably more expensive. These are, I think, pretty reasonable. I, I don't know if they're considerably more expensive, maybe another $15, $15 $20 more, but I'm sure they're worth it. But these, they had, they didn't have the more expensive ones at performance. This is what they had, that's what they hooked me up with, got a special deal on these, so. And then this next one we are going to Hopefully once we get this done here, we'll get this video finished. I will take the bike out for a spin and maybe guys give you guys an update on how it's doing how it does. The reason we go in a star pattern is so they get even tension on the points here. You don't want to over tension one side. Um, you want to get them all tightened and then you want to torque them afterward. So always you can start on the last one and torque. So crossed. Bam. Okay, so that's it for our wheels. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, um, make sure you give us a thumbs up. I'm, we have one more video to do and that's going to be putting the wheels on the bike. Actually, we got to put the fork in. So i uh, got to take the brake, not fully off the bike, uh, but um, i got to swap over the adapters uh, for the new fork. But hopefully, like I said, you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Uh, as always, make sure you click on that subscribe button up there, and that gives you access to more, to all the videos. Got hundreds of videos on, on the channel. And if you click up here, we got another video for you uh, about the mountain bike. So, as always, keep riding.